Hello, everyone. You've tuned in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, Sergeant Rich Myers with the Indiana State Police Public Information Office. We want to thank the Indiana State Police Alliance for the continued support of the Roadshow. Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance, and Tom Trial, our videographer who puts us on the ISP YouTube site each and every week. Thank you, Tom. Tom's waiting behind the camera at everyone. and You can't see him, but he's doing it. Trust me. I have three special guests with me today uh, talking with me, and i got one that's been here before, Master Trooper Randy McPike from the Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division. Thanks for coming in, Randy. Appreciate you. you coming back and being here. This is not your first time behind a radio Mike? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> He's done this before. That was a long time ago, all right? It's been uh, almost 18 years since yeah. I had a full-time radio job. Yes. comes back, though, doesn't it? It seems to, yes. <laughs> Dr. Joseph O'Neill with Riley Hospital. Thank you for coming in, Doctor, and being here with us this morning. Oh, I'm pleased to be here. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And Mike LaRocco. Director of School Transportation, Indiana Department of Transportation. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Appreciate being here. I appreciate you coming in, and and um, I pronounced that right, LaRocco. Yes, you did. All right. I got it right the second time, correct? <laughs> well, guys, what we're going to be discussing is something that's uh, unfortunately all too familiar to you guys and what's happening around the state of Indiana, and maybe not on a lot of people's radar, but uh, Randy, you're very much in tune with this, and and was telling me some stories off the air about uh, stop arm violations on school buses. And, you know, we uh, probably don't think a lot about that, that it happens a lot in Indiana, but unfortunately it does, doesn't it? It does. And Mike has some numbers that will probably astound you. Uh, let me give you a personal story just to start out with a real life story about a real life child. That was my son. Mm -hmm. He's now 21, almost 22 years old. He's in the Army Reserves. He probably would not be here today. If he were, he probably would be permanently paralyzed if it hadn't been for an alert bus driver a number of years ago. When my son was in elementary school, probably second or third grade, he was preparing to disembark the bus on an average afternoon. It was nothing um, remarkable. The sun was out and so forth. He got down to the bottom step and all of a sudden an S10 pickup truck passed the bus on the right side and because the bus driver was alert and was watching reached over grabbed the back of his shirt and pulled him back into the bus just as the small truck was passing by and that was a wake-up moment for me yeah that this happens a lot it happens more on the right side of the bus than we would like to know this vehicle actually had to go onto the berm it was a two-lane highway I actually had to go onto the berm to pass this school bus and had no idea why this young man decided that he needed to pass the school bus. But again, because of an alert bus driver who happened to be a reserve police officer, which also helped us yes. because he is a trained observer. And I'm very sure that that saved my son's life. And now he is able to live a normal life as a 21-year-old college student and member of the Army Reserve. So that person was, was found? Yes. Good. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's just say it wasn't his day because the bus driver recognized him as someone who used to ride his bus. Again, as a reserve police officer, he was a trained observer, so he quickly got the license plate number as well. And it did go to trial, and we did win that trial. Good, good, good. Well, a great outcome, unfortunately. Uh, could, what could have been easily a very bad situation. And, Absolutely. And and bad situation any time but dr o'neill why, why is running the stop arm a, such a big problem well it really puts our children at risk you know as as trooper mentioned that his son could have been seriously injured or killed and i really do think that our school bus drivers are the guardian angels protecting our our students and our children when they're on the bus but children don't always or have good impulse control they don't know to look both ways sometimes yeah. they're getting off a bus they're expecting it to be safe and if it isn't and someone runs a stop arm and they get hit and injured or possibly killed then that's a real tragedy for all of us and it's something that can be totally avoided and you work with these kids every day and and we're all parents in the room and things kids don't focus on what's at hand they're looking two stages down the road they're thinking about lunch or evening supper or, or whatever is going on so they're they're not focusing on that safety and actually it's our job to focus on that safety for them absolutely the, the onus of 
injury prevention really is on the adults. We can do all we can to to teach our children, to train our children, but at the end of the day, really it's the adult who needs to assume the responsibility of an adult and not do what they're <laughs> run stop arms or speed or do a lot of the other things that we do on the road. We need to be responsible. Mike, uh, Randy was talking about some of these numbers that Indiana uh, has. What what can you tell us about the stop arm violations here in Indiana? Well, the uh, National Association of State Directors of Pupil Transportation, an organization that I belong to, does an annual um, survey every year, try to hit all 50 states and get a one-day count, just a snapshot of what happens on a normal day and in school buses around the uh, country. In Indiana, our numbers, and, and this was done on April 25th, a Tuesday, we had uh, about 145 districts reporting, and that's only about half of what we have in the state. But with those 145 school districts, we had 2,280 stop arm violations in one day. Oh, my word. In one day. And the really scary number is of those 2,280, 40 of them were on the right side, similar to Trooper McPike's son. Someone going on the right side of that bus. And, and matter of fact, some of the stories I got from the districts were in one case, they went into the grass as a child was getting off the bus, and a parent was standing at the front door of the house, drove all the way into the grass to go around the bus. Oh, so it's 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 something. These numbers are high every year. We're running anywhere close to 2,000 or 3,000 almost every single year for the last several years. Randy, what exactly is the law covering the stop arm in Indiana? Well, the law is in Title IX in Chapter 21, and... It says that the bus, um, when it has its stop arm out, it's very simple. I mean, there's a reason that we give driver's licenses to 16-year-olds. You don't even have to have a high school diploma to know that that octagonal sign that's red on the side of the bus says stop. Yeah. When I used to do driver's ed programs with kids, I used to draw out octagonal red signs on the board, and I would put silly sayings inside, like, if there's a white border around the edge of the stop sign, you don't actually have to stop, right? That's one of the jokes that goes around social media quite often. Right. And the other one that I always put up was in really small letters, and I would have them come up to the board and look at it if they couldn't see it. If there is a red sign on the side of the road, I have to look both ways. If I'm in a hurry, I can go, especially if there's no traffic coming by and so on and so forth. And then I would hold up an actual stop sign. What does that say? Oh, it says stop. Well, yeah, it says stop. It's very simple. When that stop arm is out, you have to stop. When those red lights are on, you have to stop. You would be astounded at the number of times when I investigate a crash, not necessarily a stop arm violation, but just a crash involving a school bus. Here we have one of the largest vehicles that's onto the road. It is painted a color of yellow that it is illegal to paint any other, uh, any other vehicle on the roadway. It has seemingly miles of reflective tape which fluoresces whenever it's struck by light, whether it be a headlight or sunlight. It has lights all over it, some of them steady, some of them flashing. The number one response, and it's overwhelmingly number one, that I receive when I ask the question, why did you hit that bus? I never saw it. Really? Never saw it. I had a pickup truck a few years ago strike a school bus from behind, hit it so hard that it shattered the window in the back of the emergency door right. and the glass from that window was all the way up in the driver's area and that's exactly what the driver of the pickup told me i never saw it well and that could be absolutely true if they're not paying attention to uh, electronic devices or other uh, distractions throughout uh, what we have every day right and my message to everyone regarding school buses if you are in the area of a school bus there are two words that can save a lot of lives pay attention absolutely well, again, you're listening to the Indiana State Police Roadshow brought to you by the Indiana State Police and Lions Cops for Kids. We're talking about stop arm violations. School's going to be starting up sooner than we know, and uh, we need to have these folks looking out for the school buses. And, and they're all over the roadway pretty much throughout Indiana anymore with the different schedules that schools have. Uh, they're traveling the, the byways. So, gentlemen, I'll throw this out for all three of you. What can we do to reduce these violations? Mike? Well, the first thing we'd like to see is maybe a little bit more uh, help in the enforcement area of it. Our state police officers and local police officers do a really good job, but we would like to see a little bit more help from our legislatures about using maybe stop arm cameras and the proof of those license 
uh, plates that violate a, of vehicles that violate stop arms to be able to prosecute that a little bit more easily. It, depending on where you're at in the state, the, the method of proof is completely different. I know parts of the state where they say we have to see the driver's face or the police officer has to actually be there. Some cases, that's not the case as, as Trooper Mc, McPike was talking about a little bit earlier off camera was he has some capability to do that but that's taken a lot of work on their part so that's one area that I think we can do some get a little bit accomplished without a whole lot of cost yeah I mean there's some organizations out there that will help provide those cameras for free if they get a part of the fine and Mike you were talking about these cameras that fit just below the stop arm Um, they catch a license plates and, and you're having some success with that you said Mike. You mean Randy? I'm sorry, Randy. I'm sorry, Mike. Randy. Yeah, I'm sorry, Randy. Yes, you can actually see, physically see the stop arm that's open and flashing. The lights are flashing on it, as well as see the vehicle go by and catch the license plate number. This is one of, it is the only law that I am aware of in terms of traffic law in the state of Indiana, where there is what they call a rebuttable presumption that the owner of the vehicle is responsible for this particular violation. So what I do is I contact the prosecutors in my particular area, and I tell them if I have a license plate from the bus driver or from a stop arm camera, and I run that license plate through an inquiry for the Indiana Bureau of Motor Vehicles, and I get a match on the description, I mail a ticket to the registered owner of that vehicle with return receipt, with a return receipt signature. Right. And then the burden of proof then comes upon the bus driver to prove that that violation occurred. But again, there is a rebuttable presumption that the owner of the vehicle is the one responsible for the particular violation. So they have some responsibilities that drivers typically do not have when they are accused of infractions in the state of Indiana. And that, to me, tells me that our elected representatives in Indianapolis take this very seriously. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but this is an eight-point violation. I'm not aware of any other violation in state code in the traffic code that carries that many points. Yeah, so they're serious about that. They are serious about that. That is correct. Gentlemen, doctor, do you see a lot of patients from this? Have you have has this been a? I, I can only imagine what kind of devastation could happen to these kids if if they walk off in front of a, a vehicle, something like that. Well, we, we've been very, very fortunate as of now, as of today, when we're talking. I'm not aware of any particular injuries that have occurred, but the potential for this is catastrophic. Yeah, and it's one of those potential injuries that is totally avoidable absolutely there's no reason for it to ever happen is it no there really is not yeah and and we were talking earlier when we were before this randy the the drivers need to be aware of what the the laws are that's their responsibility and you were talking about stopping for that explain a little bit about the uh the median side of it being a grassy median or uh a, or non-grassy median or what they call a Uh, a concrete median right if you are on a roadway and there is some sort of median or there is some sort of barrier that is not intended for vehicular traffic if you are going in the opposite direction of the school bus you are not required to stop that is the only exception to the stop arm law in the state of indiana so we have for example i work in the area around kokomo and there are some decorative areas where they have fencing and they have some grass on city streets and in those particular areas the Kokomo School Corporation had to make some adjustments and make sure that they were only exiting and loading kids on the right side of the bus and if they had to go across the street then they had to take the bus around and they had to load them on that side because in that particular situation you now have a barrier that is not intended for vehicular traffic so the vehicles are not required to stop if they are going in the opposite direction. In any other instance, you cannot pass a school bus unless you have that particular situation. Well, guys, we've run out of time already talking about this very, very important situation, but uh, the people of Indiana need to know that um, you guys are out there working on this, and thank you for doing it, and thanks for coming in and being our guest today on the Roadshow. We appreciate all that you do for the kids and the safety, and maybe uh, we'll get this information and this very, very... uh, important information out to the drivers thank you well, thank you for thank the you. invitation thanks yeah. for coming in again you've been listening to the indiana state police road show my guests today have been master trooper randy mcpike from the commercial vehicle enforcement Di- division michael La- mike larocco director of school transportation and dr joseph o'neill 
Riley Pediatrician. We've been talking about stop arm violations in Indiana and what is being done to hopefully prevent those and to uh, prosecute those that are uh, running those stop arm violations. Thanks for listening, Roadshow. Roadshow out.